A good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is Tenerza to Human and welcome to this a special Games Gun edition of Medieval 2 Total War where today we're going to have a look at some of the units that were cut content. And I know Melkor made a video on this stuff about a year ago, but what I want to do instead today is take you through how to make them usable and playable, both in the custom battle and also on the full Imperial campaign. Perhaps the most interesting unit of them all is this one here, the Wagon Fort, which even has itself a lovely little picture of a wagon as its UI card, which is just marvellous. But Melkor mentioned the fact that they are not in the game properly, but the Wagon Forts do exist. They are a separate asset, sadly, and were never actually joined together as one thing. In order to get access to these things, though, you need to head into the battle editor. As far as I'm aware, there is no way of making these available on the full campaign. However, if you want to create your own little battle, you can certainly do that. Ooh, a big direct hit over there, and it doesn't seem to have taken any damage at all. Indeed, I'm fairly certain these assets don't technically exist. Now, I'll be interested to see what cover that they provide, if any, from the crossbowmen, because they're going to send their lads over here now. And yet, from what I've seen, these don't seem to take damage, even from direct hits from those cannons. And uh, some guy got hit right at the front here, and I'm not convinced that it actually blocked anything. That was another big hit over here, and again, zero damage. Sadly, these wagons don't seem to exist as a destroyable building, which was a bit of a shame. You can see the burning house over there. Certainly those buildings, it does. So let's have a quick look then. We've got some crossbow bolts shooting in at us. Are they going to be hitting this board? I'm not even sure if the wagon exists. They're a fun little asset. I will. Uh, I do have a separate video on the battle editor. There'll be a little link in the description below. But for now, for now, yeah, let's just try and work out these wagons. Do anything to protect them from the crossbow fire because uh, they, they do seem to exist. Look, we've got the little puff on the front here. So they exist, but they just can't be destroyed. Very interesting indeed. If you want to access these for yourself, then you need to click on this part, the World Package tool, and onto the Field Fortifications here. Now, there are several different war wagons, and by description of fortification, you might think it does block things. It certainly blocks the little crossbow bolts, but certainly the cannons aren't doing damage. Maybe one of these will actually take damage. I don't know. The test caravans was the other thing that's over here, by the way, the things that were getting destroyed. So we know that they do take damage. Perhaps one of these other wagons does. Nonetheless, if you want to know a bit more, this is the, currently the only way I've been able to find the wagons like this. And by doing this, you can set up a historical battle of your own. But uh, as I say, that's all in a separate video in a link in the description below. In order to edit the files, you will need to unpack them and also make sure you've played around with the preference file so that any changes you make will stick. I do have a couple guide videos on those. There'll be a link in the description below. Once you've done all that though, we need to head inside the data subfolder of Medieval 2 Total War. And from there, we're gonna scroll most of the way down and we'll find the export Deska unit file. Of course, this is a file that we've looked at several times on the channel when we changed around the Pikes or Testudo or Fanax formations, for example. But today we're gonna to focus on the attributes because what we want to do is obviously make them available in custom battle. And the key attribute is this here, no custom. The fact that they can't appear in custom battle means that we don't really see the unit. Of course, the other thing is making them recruitable in the game itself. But let's focus on this one here to start with. So if we go and use Control F to find, we can scroll down and we'll find our first unit, the Mounted Longbowmen. Now, of course, as any other unit in the game, the Mounted Longbowmen has a long description with all sorts of information. If you want to know more, read the really good detail at the top of the file. But of course, we can see here that they are listed as being used by England, which means they should be able to use them. But they've got no building to actually recruit them from, and they've got the little no custom line here to prevent them from custom battle. So what we're going to do is simply remove that, and that's all we're going to need to do to make them available for the custom battle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna skip down the file here, and we can see a few other examples. We've got the wagon fort, for example, as we get rid of these, 
just make sure you keep the formatting nice and sensible. We've got the Goulet Gorod, which is, yeah, one of those crossbow units. They're quite strong, aren't they? Quite expensive, though. We'll come back to those lads a little bit later. We have the dismounted Northeastern Bodyguard. Marvellous. Get rid of them as well. No need for the comma on the end. And then down the bottom here, yes, we have ourselves a list of other units, such as uh, yeah, Duke William and Rufus and all the other chaps who exist in the historical battles. Perhaps the biggest oddity in the file is the fact that the Norman Catapult here is listed as not available in custom battle, which is strange because obviously the Normans and the Saxons aren't available at all in custom battle anyway, so that's kind of unnecessary as an extra detail, but hey-ho, it's just the strange way of the files, I suppose. We're not really going to focus on the Normans and the Saxons today, in spite of the fact they do have themselves some specific units, we're going to look at those in a separate video because I'm going to show you how we can make them available in custom battle and I'm also in a later video after that going to look at how we can make them playable factions. I know if you've ever been asking for that it is coming, um, you know time is a strange mistress, we'll get there eventually. But for now and today we are instead going to focus on the normal units from the actual factions that exist on the game itself. So we'll come back to these guys on a later date but for now We've now got rid of no custom from all of our different units here. We're going to save the game and load up. And with a simple click of backspace, we now have all of those units available in custom battle. The good old longbowman on horseback, King Richard himself, as well as Mr. Generic Bodyguard. The French are actually allied with the English here today, which is very strange indeed. Got their own bodyguard, but also the specific kings as well. King Francis with slightly more defence than King Guy. An intriguing one for you to debate over. And we have the Wagon Fort, of course, from Hungary, as well as their own general. Well, we have the Goulet Godrov here of Russia, which is marvellous. They're pretty darn powerful. Yes, King Vladislaw of Poland, as well as his own Wagon Forts and his own bodyguard. And uh, yes, indeed, that probably is just about all of them here, without looking at the Saxons and the rebels or any of that kind of stuff but on the note of the rebels this was actually brought up on Melkor's video he mentioned something to do with one or two units like the Hussites who were not available they are actually available I'm just going to go and show you that now to show the Hussites appearing in the game then I've got myself a new rebels campaign here and we can see turn 11 some Hussites have generated themselves just outside of Vienna as it says here they appear in Bohemia but because their ownership is only the rebels, they can't be recruited by anyone. In fact, even the rebels can't recruit them, because rebel recruitment works via the culture of the other factions. So, for example, we took Vienna here, we'd be able to hire some of the Holy Roman Empire units. But what that means is the Hussites only appear by generating and spawning through little rebellion forces like this. Hence, you've probably not seen them, or if you have, they're very rare indeed. I don't think I even saw them on my entire Rebels campaign. With the simple task of making those units available in custom battle done, we now need to make them recruitable in the game itself. And to do that, we're going to have to head into this file here, Export Desk of Buildings. This is also inside the Data subfolder. This is, of course, a file that we regularly frequent here on the channel, but in case it's new to you, We'll try and keep it as simple as possible for here today. So this is the wooden palisade here, right at the top of the file, the basic city structure. It tells you which factions here can hire it. In fact, it tells you in terms of their culture. So basically, everybody can get themselves a basic city. And down here is the recruitment pool, and this is really what we need to go and change. So I'm going to go and copy this line here, and I'm just going to paste it underneath. You can see, actually, the Normans and Saxons do have their units available to hire they just don't exist so what we want to do is change this around with our own unit now we need to be very careful how we do this so let's flick back to the export desk unit file and i'll show you which line you need here's the goulet guard which i believe translates something like walking or moving town i guess that makes a lot of sense considering they are the crosswomen in behind the wagons now this is the line we actually need to go and copy it's the goulet gorod it's the one at the very top, not the one with the underscore. So just make sure you get your spacing and get your formatting correct. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that back inside the building file. Back inside buildings, then, we, of course, have copied the peasant spearmint from the Saxons. So 
inside the little quotation marks here we're just going to change that around to Gulay Gorod and of course we can go change around the faction as well so we are Russia in case you're unsure of how to spell them I think the rest of them don't use capitals it probably isn't capital sensitive seeing as they are both capitals but the rest of them don't seem to be in the file if we go and search this further down you'll probably find that it is indeed yeah all of the different factions are not capitalized so I won't really worry about that but I just keep it the same as it is in the rest of the file just to be safe and as simply as that we can now recruit this in any wooden palisade city now of course if you want you can go and put these into an actual range if you want to put them in like a marksman range or something like that but it's going to keep it simple for the moment let's go down to the next level of town because of course if you then convert this into a wooden wall city you wouldn't be able to hire this unless you put it on this list as well so we're going to well basically copy and paste make sure we get the formatting right i'll just recut that so that this time as we go down to the stone wall city we continue to slot this into the recruitment pool and you see here we've got the thanes from saxons as well so the saxons and the normans have all of their units in this game it is um yeah when we get around to that other little video it's going to be nice and simple to move things around so we are once again going to put that in there and we've got the huge stone wall lastly and as we go and put this one in we can save this up let's load up the game into a brand new game as Russia then you can see here we've got the Gulai Godrod available for recruitment they're incredibly expensive it should be added but you can go and change around all the unit stats including the recruitment cost and the upkeep and I have a separate video for changing around all of that information so if you want to do more in that kind of modding then there is a link in the description below however we want to focus on today is which buildings we can hire things out of so as you can see here this one's currently coming out of the stone wall if you want you can go and shove this under a port for all i care it doesn't really matter it's down to you at the end of the day main thing is we can now use the Goulet Godrod in the full campaign let's have a second test then this time with the english unit so under the Goulet Godrod we've got ourselves three different units that england normally don't have recruitable now we have the dismounted northeastern bodyguard which of course does include some other factions so i've put all of them in there just made sure the formatting is all good yep so the mounted longbowmen of course and king richard you can even use those king assets they will work in the game i'll show you uh, how that turns out when we load it up in a few minutes time but before that i want to just go through these four numbers here because of course with the Goulet Godrod we just copy that off the peasant spearman and that was perfectly fine but going forward it's worthwhile understanding them. So the number on the left here you can see that I've changed them up for these three units just to make sure we have a good example when we load the game. On the left is this number here which tells you how many of the units will be available at the start of the game or indeed when you build the building. So we'll have ourselves three northeastern bodyguards, two mountain longbowmen and one King Richard. The second set of numbers here, the 0 0.8, 0 0.2 and 0 0.05 refers to the pool replenishment rate. So 0 0.8 is a pretty high rate of replenishment, 0 0.2 kind of lowish and at 0 0.05 it's going to take ages for more King Richards to come along once you've recruited it. The third number here is how many max units can be in the pool at any one time. So we can only have four northeastern bodyguards available, two max long women and two King Richard at any one time. And uh, as for the last one here, this is simply the experience. So this is more like in the file Rome Total War because we only really have these ones available, don't we? So we should see zero experience on the bodyguard. We should see six experience on the longbowman and nine on King Richard. So with those explained and looked at, let's load the game and see what this looks like. Turn one is England then and we can see our three units available here. The bodyguard, we have three available the Longbowman 2 available and King Richard just the one. You can see here that the turns to recruit the next unit, two turns, kind of reflects the fact that it's 0.8 on the files. He's a couple turns for that to tick over to one. King Richard obviously got 20 turns away and the Longbowman with well, the pool's already at the max limit because of course we yeah we said two is the maximum so we can see that is at play as well. And to Longbowman on six experience, King Richard on nine and the Bodyguard on zero. 
in case you were curious what happens when we recruit these two lads. Well, we're going to try that right now because it's certainly an interesting one. Let's say no to this guy here. And uh, yeah, you can see we've got ourselves two new generals. And these are the two lads we just hired. This guy's pretty darn good, isn't he? Very nice indeed. So some randomly generated traits, of course. Much like in Barbarian Invasion, this is essentially hiring yourself a new general. You can go out onto the field. You can go and place down a watchtower, whatever you want them to do. And we also have King Richard, of course, also known as Walter Lydiat, who uh, I like to think of comes from the spirit of King Richard more than anything else. Now, he has, of course, been generated with nine experience. He's also got some nice chivalry on him, which I suppose is somewhat fitting. And, of course, these guys are their own kind of units as well. King Richard, or sort of King Richard, is a full cavalry unit, while his mate over here, Lewis of Hungerford, is a simple northeastern dismounted bodyguard. So you can see all that stuff comes together pretty nicely. As I say, both of these lads are not part of the family, but of course if you want to make them part of the family, you can take your princess and get them married. So, Lewis of Hungerford, I'm going to marry him, because I think he's going to make an interesting little test here. Now he's a family member, has he become a cavalry unit? No, he remains... Northeastern bodyguard. Very interesting indeed because, of course, now he is a member of our royal family as he's married the princess, of course. So, with that, yeah, we can might as well go and send them up north. We'll go send them to York with, um, yeah, we'll get some longbowmen. We'll go to York and we'll test these guys in battle. Let's get a good look at these longbowmen in action then because, of course, they are on beautiful horseback. They're being charged down right now. But yeah, the animation seems to work fairly well, to be honest. I know Malcolm commented on them being a tiny bit clunky. I mean, they're not 100% finished, but they certainly seem to work completely fine in my experience. No crashing going on. This guy's an absolute damn hero taking on the people of Yorkshire. Anyway, let's send in the other two lads, see how they fare. As these lads approach under arrow fire, you might well notice they've got themselves a tiny little cute shield. It is very cute indeed. I think it's a bit pointless, but if you've got a long broadsword like that, it's pretty damn hard to hold a shield in the other hand. So it kind of has us an effect of blocking with your left arm, I suppose. That's probably why they're quite so small. But into battle they go. You'll notice the battle animations are fully fledged, of course. These were used for the historical battles. So, of course, they are here. They do work. No issue running them in the main campaign, as far as I've noticed. They're sending Richard to finish the job, of course, as a normal cavalry unit. He is absolutely fine. As I say, there's been no problems of any crash in here. These have all been fully designed. They just never ended up in the game itself. So nothing more complicated than I've shown you here today, ladies and gents. Just a small line to change it to be available in custom battle. And again, just a tiny bit more fiddling, but only one small section of the building file will allow these to be recruitable in the main campaign as well. All the UI stuff is already there in the folders. No issue with any of that. So uh, go ahead, go ahead, conquer, be King Richard, and gallop in and slaughter some Yorkshiremen for yourself. Thank you for joining me today on this Games Gun edition of Medieval 2 Total War. I do hope you have fun enjoying this cut content, because certainly things like the Dismounted Bodyguard are a really intriguing unit. I know on Medieval 1 they did have the units able to dismount, so maybe they were considering that here as well, or perhaps it was just for those historical battles. All the same, I love the idea of being able to recruit my own general. I'll certainly be putting that in some of my future campaigns. But yeah, some of these units, like the Wagon Forts, are an intriguing one. Some, like the... Uh, the mounted longbowmen a little bit ridiculous but if you know more about some of these units do tell me in the links or in the comments down below and yes on the note of links there will of course be links to some of my other videos here if you want to know more about how to mod the units or indeed how to mod the building files i do have further guides on those so they might be able to help you if you've got any questions but for now i will leave you i am thomas this is tenerdis human and this has been a little guide to unlocking the cut content in medieval 2. Thank you and goodbye. Today we're going to go for particularly aggressive diplomacy. Oh, oh yes, it worked. Kablamo! <laughs> you are always going to die, Steve. Oh, my feudal knights! My crispy, crispy feudal knights! The ram's burning! <laughs> right at the death!